Let's bring in Texas Republican Congressman Jody Arrington. He's also a member of the House Ways and Means Committee and will visit the southern border this week, taking a delegation of 14 House members with him. Uh, Congressman, really important to have you on this very uh, crucial uh, topic today. When was the last time you were at the border and what will you be examining when you arrive this time? Uh, well, just uh, several months ago, I went to the uh, southern border in Arizona. I've been to the border here in Texas, but I don't think that folks in the federal government, whether it's Mayorkas or it's uh, members of Congress, are prepared to witness what's going on at the border as a result of President Biden's policies that have encouraged. I heard the clip about Mayorkas saying we're encouraging people to, to not cross the border. The fact is, actions speak louder than words, and the policies taken together are saying, come one, come all, violate our laws, mm -hmm. um, and uh, we won't detain and deport you, we will release and reward you. And that message is creating unmitigated chaos at the border. Yeah, and, and I suspect and that's what we're going to see. Yeah, Congressman, excuse me, because I've got a lot to get to uh, along to here with you. Um, um, I will, you're, to your point, I, I want to ask you, because you're talking about there's a mess down there. And so when you get down there, what local authorities, CBP, mayors will you meet with? And what questions will you have for them? Well, we're going to meet with local landowners who, whose properties have been ransacked. We're going to meet with local law enforcement officers who've been, who've been pulled off of protecting their community to be adjunct border patrol agents, school administrators who are already overwhelmed, Arthel, because of, of reopening schools safely in the, in the COVID context. We're going to meet with uh, hospitals who were overwhelmed mm -hmm. and just now getting to a place where they can manage capacity. Texans are coming back. We're, we're well on our way to pre-COVID, but we could see a major spike because folks are not just being caught and released. They're not being screened. They're not yeah. being tested. And Mayorkas can't even give an account for that. He didn't last week at his hearing. So we will meet with local uh, stakeholder groups. But, yeah. the, but the key is we want to expose the hypocrisy. Pelosi says walls yeah. are immoral. You know, yeah. but she puts it around the Capitol. There are a lot of things that we have got to expose this administration and put pressure on them to prioritize the American people. Sure. And, you know, listen, a lot of, like you said, the Texans are dealing with this firsthand. I want to ask you, though, will you request a meeting with President Biden once you return to Washington to present your assessment of the problem and suggestions on an immediate fix and, and, and perhaps a road to a long term solution? Absolutely. And in, in fact, it, the, the solution is pretty straightforward. S enforce the laws and secure the border. The president prior to him did those things and we saw a 75 percent drop in illegal border crossings. Sure. And, so and I, let me I, ask you, sir, yeah. you're right. You're absolutely right. President Trump, former president now, you know, made it very clear and he had some what some, you know, would criticize as some really crucial, inhumane uh, ways to demonstrate his uh, deterrence from those trying to cross the border illegally. So what is the the happy medium, if you will? You know, maybe not so extreme, but not so not too loose either. Well, Arthel, any signal that says you, you can come over and that you won't be held accountable, that you'll be released to the city or community of your choice, and that Democrats have bills that say you will have amnesty and a pathway to citizenship, that is inhumane because it is encouraging folks to take the dangerous trip here. And obviously, they can't come without uh, the people who are truly in control of the border. That, those are the cartels. So these folks are being exploited and they're being extorted and they're being assaulted. And so the humanitarian crisis exists when we say you can come here outside of the proper channels. Mm -hmm. Certainly there are ways to fix the legal system, but people have to go through those channels or we have this chaos and Indeed. not just a security crisis, but the humanitarian crisis. Indeed, good point you make there, Congressman. Finally, if, if, in short order, if I could, do you think a congressman that you, do you think you uh, Congress Congress and, and, and as a whole do you think y'all have the real will to fix this together in a bipartisan way? We when we were in control of, of Congress, the Republicans offered the I think compromise solution to deal with DACA, okay, and secure the border and put the American people's security first 
and it was rejected, didn't get a single Democrat. I haven't seen anything in any legislation from Democrats that have enforcement of the law, closing the loopholes, turning off the magnets, and securing the border. If they would just do that instead of cutting out the American people's interest, we would be happy to sit down with them. But that isn't the case. And by the way, you asked about talking to the president. He has been in office 60 days, has passed more unilateral executive orders than any president in history. He hasn't talked to the press. He hasn't talked to the people. He hasn't given account for this. So I doubt he takes my invitation for a meeting because he well, won't even speak well, to the American con people. But we'll certainly try. I have to go there. They're good. I was going to say, please do try and let us we know will. if you succeed. Okay, you'll come back and tell us. Okay, and Thanks how that meeting happening. goes. Hopefully, you get it. Absolutely. Thanks for joining us, Congressman Jody Arrington. Take care, yep. Eric.